Hello, and welcome to the Songwriters Workshop. This is the series where I attempt to write songs based on the process and techniques of famous songwriters. Each video looks at a different songwriter's writing habits, musical inspirations, and creative process, while also including an original song written using those techniques. So let's take a look at our next songwriter. This video will look at legendary Motown songwriter Lamont Dozier. Lamont grew up in Detroit in the 40s and 50s, and after mild success as part of a vocal group with his school friends called the Romeos, in 1962 Lamont would be hired to work primarily as a songwriter and producer at Motown by its founder, Barry Gordy. Oh man, you're gonna give me a whole hundred dollars for all of my songs? Where do I sign, Mr. Barry Gordy? At Motown, he would meet brothers Brian and Eddie Holland, and the three would form the songwriting team Holland Dozier Holland. Holland Dozier Holland would first find a major success with Martha and the Vandellas with their song Heat Wave in 1963. The team would go on to even larger success writing for the Supremes, starting in 1964 with the release of Where Did Our Love Go, which was followed by a string of hits including Baby Love, Stop in the Name of Love, and You Can't Hurry Love. Holland and Dozier Holland would also work frequently with the Four Tops, penning hit songs like I Can't Help Myself, Sugar Pie Honey Bunch, Reach Out, I'll Be There, and Bernadette, as well as writing songs for other Motown artists like Marvin Gaye, the Isley Brothers, and Smokey Robinson. However, after legal battles with Barry Gordy over song rights and compensation, Lamont and the Hollands would leave Motown to start their own record labels, Hot Wax and Invictus, in 1968. Outside the grasp of Motown, Lamont would begin his own career as a recording artist, releasing his first album, Out Here On My Own, in 1973, which was followed by my favorite album of Lamont's, Black Bach, in 1974. Lamont would continue to write and record music for the rest of his life, working with artists like Phil Collins on the Grammy Award-winning song Two Hearts, and having his music covered or sampled by a wide variety of artists, from James Taylor to the Notorious B.I.G. Sadly, Lamont passed away just last year at the age of 81, but his legacy and impact on the world of music lives on. The research for this video will come from Lamont's autobiography, How Sweet It Is. In the book, Lamont not only gives us the story of his life, but also imparts the vital songwriting lessons he's learned throughout the years. On talking about why he is a songwriter, Lamont says, From the time I was young, I was looking for something greater. I wanted inner peace, but that's not something that comes easily. I guess that's why I started writing songs. I wanted to try to search for solutions to the problems of this world. I wanted to stare in the face of the big questions about life and love. Shared love, painful love, unrequited love, perfect love, God's love, and every other kind of love. To try to connect with others and make sense of things. So let's take a look at how Lamont confronted those questions in his music, and what he learned along the way. During their time at Motown, Lamont and the Hollands worked out a songwriting methodology that allowed them to work as effectively and efficiently as possible to pump out hit song after hit song. Lamont explains their process like this. I would be the idea man. I'd bring in a lyrical concept, and Brian and I would develop a piece of music around it. Once we had a title, or a chorus lyric, or a framework mapped out, we'd hand off the song to Eddie to finish the lyrics. That way we could move on to the next song, while he completed and fine-tuned the words. So I decided to adopt this methodology to write my song, by switching mindsets between each phase, and using each member's contributions to the process as a step zone to my completed song demo. The first step in the process is Lamont's Idea Man phase, where he finds the basis of the song's message and emotional content. For Lamont, many of his ideas come from observing and reacting to real-life situations. He begins his book with an anecdote on how he came up with the idea for a stop in the name of love, with it being something he said to an angry lover when she caught him with another woman. Lamont says, Ideas are all around us if we keep an ear out for them. Being a songwriter is a way of life, and that way is all about observation. So, like many songwriters I've covered, Lamont says you should always be on the lookout for song ideas from any place you can find them. The idea for my song title actually came from Lamont's book, so I have him to thank for the inspiration. Lamont also offers some useful ways to get into a creative mindset, saying, 
When I showed up for work every morning, I would go through this little ritual to get the creative juices flowing. It usually involved sitting down at the piano and playing through a piece of music that I was working on, or maybe something I'd already completed that just hyped me up and made me feel inspired. I've also found that going back to a work in progress song or even playing through an old song snaps me back into that songwriting zone and helps me focus my mind on creating. Lamont also suggests tapping into your emotional memory in order to find inspiration. He says, When I'm writing, I often let my mind wander back to events from my formative years. I let myself get nostalgic and try to tap into the purity of some of those youthful feelings and emotions. It allowed me to access the feelings of puppy love and translate those universal emotions into a song. Likewise, Lamont also tunes to the spiritual waves of songwriting, allowing for songs to reveal themselves to him. He says, As a songwriter, I believe we have to be open to the spiritual realm. Not everything can be explained with the mind, so to touch people's hearts with my music, I have to put myself in a position to tap into the spiritual stuff to channel the things that get to the essence of what it means to be human, and to function in a world that is spiritually connected in ways we can't even imagine. Every time I'm writing a song, I'm putting in the work and applying the craft, but I'm ultimately trying to get around myself to receive the song as it should be. Sometimes when I'm writing, I'm looking for one chord in my mind, and then my finger might fall on a wrong note that changes the whole melody. I'll think, wow, that's the direction I'm supposed to be going. There are no accidents in creativity. That's the muse at work. Something or somebody is there, sitting over your shoulder. Ultimately though, Lamont urges us to be true to ourselves and to express ourselves honestly. He says, If you want to write songs that move people, you have to write from a place that moves you. You need to find an emotional connection to your subject. If it doesn't resonate with you, it's probably not going to resonate with someone else either. In that respect, all songwriting is personal. You've got to be willing to put your heart on the line if you want to touch the hearts of your listeners. For me, a song has to mean something. If it doesn't touch me in an emotional place, whether that be joy, sadness, desire, humor, tenderness, or what have you, then I'll just set it aside. It's not that song's time yet. Thankfully, I felt confident and connected to my idea. So I moved on to the next step in the Holland Dozier Holland methodology. The next step in the process is creating the musical framework of the piece, something that Lamont did in collaboration with Brian Holland. Lamont doesn't go into much detail on the music side of things, but my biggest takeaway from Lamont in this regard is to be open to having the song change and grow with the music. He says, be flexible enough to change your ideas when it's appropriate to do so. Our songs are like our babies, and it's easy to get precious about them sometimes. I'm not saying that writers should compromise their vision or change things on a whim, but I am saying that there are situations where we must avoid being rigid in order for the song to emerge as what it was meant to be in the first place. Always put the song ahead of your ego. Sometimes you think a song should be one way, but that song will tell you if it's meant to be something else entirely. Don't fight it. As I said before, that doesn't mean songwriters should compromise their vision, but it does mean that one of the most important things in songwriting success is to set aside your ego. In the case of Holland Dozier Holland, Lamont would often come up with heartfelt, emotional ballads that the team would then morph into up-tempo hit songs. He says, One of the common characteristics of our songs that would develop with time was an upbeat, happy feel with lyrics about sadness and heartbreak. If you really pay attention to the lyrics of some of our classic songs that make you feel good when they come on the radio, you'll notice that the words are often pretty bleak. We felt like the beat was the optimism. The lyric was sad, but the beat and the feel was the injection of hope that things could get better. We were all about taking a dark poem and transforming it into a ray of light with our music and production approach. This is an interesting effect that I've always enjoyed playing with having the words contradict the music. My song also started out as a slower ballad that I then tried injecting with some upbeat music. Though for any interested, you can track down an album Lamont released called An American Original, where Lamont says, I recorded a bunch of Holland Dozier Holland classics from the heyday, but I presented them the way they were originally conceived, 
as slow, lovelorn ballads. It was how the songs sounded before Brian and I sped them up to make them more radio-friendly, and the people really responded to hearing them in a more intimate presentation. In the end, I think it's about being open to trying things in new ways. As Lamont says, know when to break your own rules. Where some songwriters make a mistake is thinking that they don't need to listen to any of the rules or guidelines in the first place. That's not true. The better you know the rules, the wiser you are about when and how to break them. Soak up all the songwriting wisdom you can as you dedicate yourself to the craft, but recognize that there's occasionally a time and place to set it all aside and pursue something outside the box. The final step in our process is to complete and refine the lyrics. This was something that was often passed off to Eddie Holland, who would also record the guide vocal for the recording artist, but Lamont has plenty of wisdom to impart on the art of lyric writing. To start with, Lamont says, First, you need to have a point of view that informs what you want to say. If you're a songwriter, you'll have to have your own thoughts about who your audience is and what values you want to transmit through your lyrics. Nobody else can decide that for you, but if you want to be a great writer, it's crucial that you understand your own perspective and how you can best communicate it. So I started thinking about what feelings and viewpoints I wanted my song to embody, but as I thought about it, what I was trying to express felt too generalized or already covered by other songwriters. So I turned to more advice from Lamont when he says, You have to be true to yourself. Different people will want different things from you at different times, but you have to have a strong sense of self in order to stay grounded and centered. I said earlier that a songwriter needs to have perspective and a voice, but equally important is being able to hold on to that perspective when others want you to be something you're not. However, this is not to say that I wanted my song to be hyper-personal. Lamont also has the unique talent of taking something specific to his life and making it universal and relatable. He says, I talk about writing songs from a place that moves you, but the best songwriters know how to take personal feelings and translate them into universal experiences. If you can start with that personal, passionate spark, and then widen your message so that people can project their own experiences onto it, then you've achieved one of the building blocks of what it takes to be a special kind of writer. So you need to find that balance between remaining true to yourself and your experiences, but also tapping into the collective consciousness. And if you ever find yourself stuck, like I often do, Lamont has some words of wisdom in that regard. He says, There's no such thing as writer's block. When I have the chance to talk to aspiring songwriters, I always tell them to stop feeding those lies about writer's block. Writer's block only exists in your mind, and if you tell yourself you have it, it will cripple your ability to function as a creative person. Sometimes you can't figure out what to do next, but that's not writer's block. If you tell yourself it is, you'll back off instead of plowing through and pushing forward. The answer to so-called writer's block is doing the work. If you press on, the answers you need will come through. Before I share you the song, I want to share this last bit of advice from Lamont that discusses something a lot of songwriters deal with, including myself, and one of the reasons I make these videos and songs. He says, I'll leave you with one last lesson that has become my mantra for both songwriting and life. I don't say I have bad days anymore. I have good days, and I have learning days. When things aren't going right, there's always something to be learned from the experience. There are ways to grow and improve. I put my heart on the line, but it feels like I'm wasting your time. Love me or leave me, but baby. I've spent too many tears Watching away all the years Hoping and praying Your love was staying with me I 
How sweet to know your devotion was only a show. I'm holding on to something I know is already gone. If you would grant. I hope you enjoyed the song. This style of music is outside my usual comfort zone, but I always enjoy exploring different kinds of music to see how it will affect my songwriting. So I had fun writing the song and putting together this demo. And I would highly recommend Lamont's book, How Sweet It Is. It is a fantastic account and guide to the life of a songwriter. Thank you for joining me for this episode of the Songwriter's Workshop. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more videos in the future. I'll see you at the next song.